a plea to Impact Wrestling. Sign Blake Christian immediately. Brian Myers signs an official contract with Impact Wrestling. The Good Brothers appear on AEW. And I come across a very, very dumb article. All this and more coming up next on Shooting Up North with Lewis Carlin right here on the Impact Lounge. Hey folks, welcome to Shooting Up North. I'm your host, Lewis Carlin. Thanks for joining me today. Two things real quick. One, I'm a little under the weather today, so if you hear me cough, uh, or if you see me cough, or if you, my voice sounds scratchy, or if I clear my throat, I do apologize. I am a little under the weather today. And I also want to point out that I do have my own YouTube channel, the Alliance Pro Wrestling Network. We have two new interviews up there one with up-and-coming star here in ontario Jax williams as well as another up-and-coming star in the states blaze haram go ahead and check it out two new interviews up as well as the debut of mlw rewind is a podcast they do with george mckay it's um mlw based podcast we talk mlw the first podcast is up uh, actually this first and second podcast is up i wasn't able to take pl uh, part in episode two uh, but episode one uh, we had an interview with richard holiday so go ahead check that out it's on the alliance pro wrestling network i will put the link in the comments section of this podcast i know i said i was going to do that last time with the last podcast i failed to do that i do apologize but i will make sure i get the link this time for this podcast for the alliance pro wrestling network head on over there and please hit that subscribe button okay so let's get cracking here with uh, Impact Wrestling News uh, and um, Impact Wrestling News. So uh, Genesis is coming on, Super X Cup, and I need to make a plea right now to Impact Wrestling, and that is Impact Wrestling, please sign Blake Christian like immediately. Don't wait. Don't hesitate. Sign Blake Christian right now, right now. Blake Christian against Ace Austin in the Super X Cup Finals was an absolutely tremendous match. It's definitely a match of the year candidate, and it's only January right now. And I know we have a long way to go, but uh, it's definitely going to be a, at least an Impact Wrestling match of the year candidate. was absolutely fantastic. Loved the match. So happy that he made it to the finals. I was a little nervous he's going to lose to to Crazy Steve, but uh, thankfully he won. He got to the to the finals, and wow, just what a match against Ace Austin! It was just fantastic. I knew Ace Austin was going to win. I predicted it. I said there's no way Ace Austin is going to lose this tournament, and I was right. Uh, he did win the 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 Super X Cup tournament, but man, don't wait. I'm when when Scott Demore came out, first of all, let's let's talk about this first. Um, Scott Demore comes out to present the Super X Cup <laughs> to Ace Austin. Uh, first of all, they could have sprung for a better looking cup. I mean, it's supposed to be a prestigious, the prestigious Super X Cup, and he comes out with a little tiny, what looked like a plastic cup with a, with just a a very it looked like it was a. a the, um, I think it said Impact Super X Cup winner. It looked like instead of in, in, engraved on there, it was like it was just a plate that was just st stuck on there with like with glue. And it, it kind of looked like they sent Josh Matthews to like a Goodwill store or something to go look for that cup and say, hey, see if you can find a trophy for us. They, they, they could have sprung and made it look a, a little bit nicer. And the presentation of the Super X Cup could have been done a little better. It's, remember, they're, they're calling it the prestigious Super X Cup. Instead of, instead of um, Scott Demore coming down with his headset on and he's got papers sticking out of his back pocket, you know, maybe, maybe they could have like, had um, Matt Stryker or they could have had um, even Josh Matthews just have a, even someone from the back make it look like they're Impact Wrestling officials. A few of them come out, they carry out the cup and do a little presentation, and then hand the cup to him instead of just Scott Demore walking out to go through the motion. Oh, here you go, here's the cup. Okay, thank you. 
and then and then leaves. They they could have done a little better than that. And it just it's this little tiny cup. They they could have uh they you look look at uh, New Japan Pro Wrestling. The Super J Cup winner gets a nice trophy and he gets a gold jacket he gets to wear to to show off that he's the Super J Cup winner. Impact Wrestling could have done something similar to make it seem like it is in fact a prestigious tournament. And I think they failed there. But but nonetheless, it was a it was a great tournament. I really enjoyed it. And when Scott Demore did come out and he had the papers in his back pocket, I initially thought that oh here we go. Here we go. Blake Christian is getting a contract. He's gonna. He's after he hands that little tiny plastic cup to Ace Austin. Uh, Blake Christian's gonna get his contract, but that unfortunately didn't happen. Uh, but they shouldn't wait. They shouldn't wait. I know Casey Navarro was on the was on the show. He did really well. He cut a decent promo. He has star potential, uh, but he's gonna be on AEW Dark this week, and uh, not sure what's happening there. So I just don't wait. Blake Christian is an incredible talent. He proved it. He took Ace Austin to the limit. And as I said earlier, it was a tremendous, tremendous match. He's exactly what Impact Wrestling needs right now. Don't wait. Sign him like right now. Don't wait. Get that contract and sign. Get the contract ready and sign Blake Christian, please. Please, I want to. I want to see the announcement this week, because sooner or later, Blake Christian's going to end up in AEW Dark, and he's going to be on AEW Dark for a while. And once he gets the taste of AEW, he's not going to want to sign with Impact Wrestling. So don't hesitate here. Make him an offer. Lock him up for three years. Just, just get it done, man. Just get it done. Speaking of signing with Impact Wrestling. Speaking of signing with Impact Wrestling, uh, Brian Myers has signed an official contract with Impact Wrestling, and uh, that's good news. I like Brian Myers. Uh, I didn't know he was an, was an official. Apparently, he was um, either was a short term contract or he was working a pay per appearance. Uh, but he's inked a deal. Uh, I think it's a two or three year deal. I think I read that somewhere. Don't quote me. Uh, but his tweet, he tweeted out. Thanks for the money, Eddie. Talking about Ed Nordholm. Uh, you just made the best decision of your life. You now have a workhorse in the prime of his career with a massive chip on his shoulder signed to your roster. And he put down uh, the most professional wrestler at Impact Wrestling. Uh, he put Impact Wrestling is now mine. So that's great news. I'm glad to see Brian Myers. They could do a lot with Brian Myers. He has great potential. So congratulations, Impact Wrestling and Brian Myers uh, for the new contract. And I look forward to see what, they, uh, what they're what they going to do with Brian Myers. I would love to see um, Brian Myers and Josh Alexander get into a feud. I know Josh Alexander wanted to go solo. Um and it looks like there he's going to be headed to the solo uh, solo run at Impact Wrestling. I think Josh Alexander and Brian Myers would be a great start starting feud for the both of them. And I think it would be a really really entertaining feud. And uh, but wherever they go with it, I'm very happy that Brian Myers will be here um, for the next uh, few years, long term anyway, with Impact Wrestling. So again, congratulations on the deal, Brian Myers, and congratulations Impact Wrestling for signing Brian Myers, and congratulations to the fans who are going to get some really good professional wrestling action out of Brian Myers. And I really like that he said that uh, he has a massive chip on his shoulder. You can only assume that he means that... He's upset that the WWE didn't give him a real chance, and he's going to prove them wrong. And what better promotion to prove them wrong than right here in Impact Wrestling? So great stuff. Great stuff all around. So the Good Brothers. The Good Brothers appeared on AEW. And uh, actually, before I get into that, let's just go back to Genesis for a second. Uh, I know we spoke about the Super X Cup. So I want to talk about Moose and Willie Mack. That was another absolutely fantastic match. I was thinking there's no way that Willie Mack and Moose are going to be able to follow Blake Christian and Ace Austin, but they followed it, and they had a absolutely fantastic, fantastic match. I enjoyed Genesis. I enjoyed Genesis a lot, and I hope you did as well. Uh, but this was fantastic. There was one scary moment when uh, Moose off the top turnbuckle – Power bombed uh, Willie Mack through the table. Willie Mack's head hit that um, hit that floor hard. He hit that floor hard, and I was legitimately legitimately scared. A lot of people that were watching were scared as well as as they were um, posting on social media. Uh, but thankfully, he's okay. Hopefully, he um, 
Hopefully he's okay. Hopefully he didn't suffer a concussion or anything. Uh, but um, but great, great stuff. Great match. I love the ending. I love uh, Rich Swan coming out and saying that he's going to give Moose a title shot. And Moose, just thank you, and I quit. And uh, that's all he wanted. He wanted that title shot. Now he's going to get that title shot against Rich Swan. So Rich Swan has got his hands full now. He's got his hands full with Kenny Omega. And and he's got his hands full of moose. So um, we'll see. Uh, it's either going to go one or two ways, obviously. Uh, either Moose is going to defeat Rich Swan to give Kenny Omega a more credible opponent here in Impact Wrestling. Um, a more credible world champion opponent, opponent, I should say. Or Rich Swan is going to go over on Moose and to make himself a more credible opponent for Kenny Omega in the AEW title, where they do, in fact, have the title unification match. And uh, I don't know when the um, the match is going to schedule for. It's not scheduled for uh, the, the – which one? Moose match is what I'm talking about. Uh, I'm not sure when that's scheduled for. I don't know if it's going to be on an Impact Wrestling show. Uh, I would, would hope that they would save it for a pay-per-view. Uh, this Kenny Omega thing is not going to last forever, so maybe the next pay-per-view will get Moose against Rich Swan. But nonetheless, Genesis was fantastic. Uh, the last two matches uh, were just simply spectacular. If you haven't seen it, sorry about the spoilers, but do check it out. It is absolutely fantastic. Now on to the Good Brothers. Good Brothers appeared on AEW. They jumped in. I'm getting a message here from BQ. You're going to have to hold on, BQ. I got to finish this podcast before I can answer your message, man. Sorry. Sorry. Um, so, uh, yeah. So, as I was saying, uh, Good Brothers appeared on AEW. Um, John Moxley came out to attack Kenny Omega. Good Brothers jump in. They attack... Um, they attack John Moxley. They take him out. And then members of... Um, the AEW roster who was in the crowd tried to jump in. And uh, they were taken out by the Good Brothers. So it's good stuff. Good stuff all around. The Young Bucks came out as well. And they all got together and did a two suite. So it was very interesting. Um, after the Young Bucks came out, Brian Pillman Jr. tried to attack um, uh, Kenny Omega. But he, they got super kicked. He got super kicked by um, by Matt Jackson, uh, which is really interesting. And they all ended with the two suites. And the crowd chanting, too sweet, too sweet. So it was, it was a good moment. It was a good feel-good moment. Bullet Club is back. Uh, so you have to wonder what's going to happen. What's going to happen? Happen hard to kill. Are, are the young bucks going to show up and uh, assist Kenny Omega and the Good Brothers? Um, is John Moxley going to show up at Hard to Kill and, and go after uh, Kenny Omega? Is Sammy Callahan going to be enlisted enlisted by John Moxley to come to AEW and assist him in his war with Kenny Omega and the Good Brothers? So many possibilities there. I just I can't wait to see how it all unfolds. I can't wait to see how it all unfolds. It's it's just, it's really shaping up to be a great great um, partnership, and um, I'm looking forward to it. It's and you got Lance Archer now. Lance Archer now getting involved, saying that the Good Brothers couldn't take him out the way they took out John Moxley, and Lance Archer saying that he might show up and at, at the Impact Wrestling locker room, um, and maybe take a few people out. So. Lots of possibilities there. It's, like I said, it's really shaping up to be a tremendous, tremendous storyline. And I, I hope it lasts for a while. And I am looking forward to seeing what is going to happen at Hard to Kill. I'm looking forward to seeing what's going to happen at, at the next AEW show. Who's going to show up? Who's going to get taken out? It's just great stuff all around, man. Great stuff all around. Speaking of great stuff all around... Let's talk about Cody Diener for a second, and then I'm going to go into the dumb article and then wrap this up because my throat is killing me right now. <laughs> so I uh, just want to talk about Cody Diener, his amazing character change. Uh, while I do that, I'm going to pull up the – there we go. Okay, so his his character change is amazing. I absolutely love what they did with Cody Diener. Um just he cut off the long hair. Uh, he's just changed his whole persona. Absolutely love it. Uh, he was doing the giver character for a very, very long time. And it's um, just uh, refreshing to see a brand new Cody Diener. I'm a huge fan of it. Not necessarily a huge fan of Tommy Dreamer getting involved and, and, and calling for an old school's match at Hard to Kill. But nonetheless, that's what's happening. But I absolutely love the new Cody Diener. I absolutely love the new Cody Dino. I messaged him about it. I let him know. And um, big fan. I'm really looking forward to seeing uh, what Cody Dino is going to be doing in 20, um, 
2021. I almost forgot the year there for a second. See, I'm not, I'm not feeling well today. So uh, I almost said 2001, 2021. Uh, and I think he's going to have a great, great 2021, uh, Cody Diener. And uh, I'm looking forward to it, man. Looking forward to it. And I, I, I would expect him to go over. I would, would expect his team to go over. Uh, he's teaming with Joe Doring and Eric Young uh, at Hard to Kill against um, Rhino, Tommy Dreamer, and Cousin Jake. Uh, I would expect that Eric Young's team is going to go over in that one. Uh, but we'll see. We'll see what happens. Old school's match. You never know what's going to happen. You know, old school rules. But... <laughs> But, you know, I was actually, I was fully expecting, go back to Genesis for one second. I was fully expecting Cody Diener to come out and interfere and cost um, Cousin Jake the match against Ace Austin. That would have actually added fuel to the fire in their feud. Uh, but uh, that uh, that wasn't the case, unfortunately. But um, nonetheless, BQ still messaging me. <laughs> I'll get to you in a second, BQ. I'm sorry. I can't. Uh, I got to finish this podcast. Uh, he doesn't know. He doesn't know that I'm recording right now. He's sending me messages. Um but, uh, but yeah, so um, Cody Diener, great stuff, man. Great stuff. So let's get on to this dumb article. Let's get on to this dumb, dumb article uh, that actually was sent to me by a friend of mine, my friend Pat, my buddy Pat, uh, sent me this mess, sent me this article. And it's, it's one of the dumbest, stupidest, ridiculous articles I've ever read because it's, it's – this guy is not an Impact Wrestling fan who wrote it. He actually – he did a review. It's an Impact Wrestling review from 1-5-2020, okay? And it was from Pop Culture Wrestling, and it was written by Anthony DeSalvatore. So let's, let's, let's kick this off. Let's read the first paragraph. It says, don't get your hopes up, people. This may be one and done, okay? My hopes aren't up. <laughs> what is he? Is he talking about, I think he's talking about one and done for him That he's only going to watch it one time now, Most fans seem pretty apathetic Towards Impact these days But they keep finding ways to stay alive Yeah, most fans don't feel that way About Impact Wrestling Most fans are smart And they realize that Impact Wrestling Has tremendous talent And they're putting on some great shows That's what most. How's how most fans are feeling right now and they don't just find ways to stay alive. They stay alive because they, they, they keep giving us quality shows. Not everything is perfect, but the talent there is great, and they know what to do. They know how to please the fan, and that's what they're doing. Okay, lots of talent there in Impact Wrestling, and uh, don't um, don't go ahead and say that they're, they're finding ways just to stay alive. They, people have been saying that for the past five years. Okay, so let, let, let's move on. Let's move on. So it's been a long time since I watched. When was the last time Scott Steiner was on? Yeah, okay, that's that's real funny. That's real funny. Uh, trying to trying to add humor into this into this um, moronic article. Okay. He goes, Josh Matthews, Josh Matthews refuses to go away. He goes, in the opening, I recognize Eric Young and Rhino, but not much else. Let's get on with the opening match. Okay, so the, he goes to the opening match, which was Ace Austin versus Casey Navarro versus Blake Christian versus Crazy Steve. So he says, I have no clue who any of these guys are besides Crazy Steve. I know he was a tag team champion with Abyss once, and Abyss doesn't work there anymore. It must have been a year ago that I heard Steve was going to NXT, but I guess he turned Triple H down. He has no clue how these who these guys are. This is a typical WWE fan. No clue who these guys are. You know, doesn't know anything about wrestling outside of the WWE and maybe AEW. So he's what he feels. He thinks he's trying to be cool by kind of knocking Impact Wrestling, which is which is really um which is really stupid. So we go down for a little bit and he goes, uh, we, we, now up next, we see Sammy Callahan trying his best to steal the SmackDown hackers gimmick. I never thought anyone would try to steal anything from Mustafa Ali, but here we are. Yeah. Sammy Callahan is trying to steal the hacker gimmick from Mustafa Ali. It's because, because, Sammy Callahan wasn't already doing the hacker gimmick when he was back in NXT a few years ago. Yeah, he wasn't doing that. So he, he, Sammy Callahan completely forgot about that. And what he's doing, he saw Mustafa Ali do it. He said, you know what? That's a good gimmick. I'm going to steal that from Mustafa Ali. What kind of trash is this? What kind of trash are you writing here, you idiot? 
that's stealing it from Mustafa Ali. Okay, if anything, Mustafa Ali is stealing it from Sammy Callahan, you schmuck. No, don't be so stupid. He's trying to steal it from Mustafa Ali. I wonder how many WWE shirts this guy owns. Probably quite a few. Probably quite a few. Because he says he has a match later with Eddie Edwards, who he almost killed on the air once with a baseball bat and a lawn chair. He didn't almost kill him. You know, he, he it, it was a it was a botch. He hit him in the eye. It was horrible. And thankfully, Eddie Edwards was okay. Uh, but he didn't try to kill him. He goes, also, I saw the same keyboard he's using in this segment on a gaming website for around $30. I would say it's all uphill from here, but it's a lot easier to go down. Okay, whatever. whatever. So let's let's move on. Um, okay, so we, and then he talks about Rhino versus Cousin Jake versus Cody Dina versus Joe Doring. Completely destroys his spelling of Doring. He spells it completely wrong. And he goes, allow me to give you some context. Eric Young has returned to Impact, and he appears to be starting his own group. Duh, really? Eric Young has returned to Impact? Well, when did you figure this out? You know, he's, he's been back for quite some time. You know, but, oh, hey, let me add some context here. Eric Young appears to be back, and, and uh, he appears to be starting his own little group here. Really? He's like, he's, 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 he's recruited a couple of guys, up until including Cody Diener, who once held the ladies' tag team titles with ODB. First of all, that's incorrect. That's incorrect. He never held the Impact Wrestling Knockouts tag team title with ODB. He held the Knockouts title, which he I can't remember who he defeated for it, um, but I know him and ODB were, were in a triple threat match. I think it might have been Angelina Love, and it was for the Knockouts um, title, which... Cody Dieter won, and ODB felt that he shouldn't be having it. He should give it to her, but they were arguing back and forth over it. But nonetheless, he never held the Knockouts Tag Team title with ODB. So incorrect there, pal. Incorrect there, Mr. DeSalvatore, whatever your last name is. So you're wrong there. So you're wrong there. He's, he, he's not a former Knockouts Tag Team champion. Okay, so let's... Uh, I just want to point that out. So let's let's scroll down for a little bit. Um, what else was was? Oh yeah. Okay. Here, Moose versus Matthew Palmer. Moose versus. Well, I don't want to make. I want, I want to make sure I didn't miss anything here because there's a, quite a few stupid comments in here, stupid stupid um statements in this article. Um. Okay. Let's let's move down here. Moose versus Matthew Palmer. He writes. I'm not sure what the story is here. But this dude has to last three minutes with Moose. He doesn't know what the story is, but he just told us what the story is. The storyline is. Because I don't know what the storyline is here, but but here's the storyline. This dude has to last three minutes with Moose. So so you do know what the storyline is. You do know the storyline. You know, the guy has to last three minutes with Moose. So so what's the problem? I'm not sure what the storyline is here, but the dude has to last three minutes with Moose. That, that's the storyline. This guy, this guy was needs to last three minutes with Moose. Where, where's the, what? What's the issue? What? What don't you? <laughs> what don't you understand? It's like uh, I don't. Uh, you just, you just told us. <laughs> you just told us the storyline. I don't, I don't understand the. I don't know what the storyline is here, but here's the storyline. <laughs> what? What's Come on. It's, it's. Okay. Okay. It's such, such stupidity. So it's dumb. That's dumb. And then, then, uh, he goes, okay, Sammy Callahan was Eddie Edwards. Uh, he goes, and he starts, I guess these two are still fighting over the incident I mentioned earlier, which was, uh, Sammy Callahan hitting Eddie Edwards accidentally with the baseball bat. No, that's not the reason. That happened a long time ago. That's not the reason why this match is taking place. Okay, if if you if you haven't watched Impact Wrestling, if you haven't watched Impact Wrestling, why are you bothering reviewing it for? You know, maybe you should watch a few episodes first and then review five episodes down the road instead of just jumping in and interviewing and knocking everything that you that you're seeing and saying oh, I don't rec I don't recognize this guy I don't recognize that guy where's Scott Steiner you know who's this uh, are they still feuding over the baseball bat to the eye. You know, I don't understand what, what the storyline is here, but the guy needs to last three minutes with Moose. You, you, 
this, this was just a just a, just a ridiculous attempt. Actually, what this is was an attempt by this guy just to knock Impact Wrestling, you know, just to knock Impact Wrestling. Um, because he goes, I came into this program with tempered expectations since I hadn't watched in a while. It was good to see Luke and Coral. I don't know who Coral is. Maybe he means Carl. But he wrote, I, I, it was good to see Luke and Coral and Rich Swan again. And I have a good feeling about Deanna Perazzo, but that alone won't make me watch next week. Good, good. That's fine. Don't watch next week. Who cares? Who cares? You know, Callahan doesn't belong in a wrestling ring at all if he doesn't know his way around it. What are you talking about? What are you talking about? You know, you, you don't belong you don't belong on the internet if you don't know your way around and writing an, on how to write an article. How about that? You don't belong working for pop culture wrestling if you don't know your way around writing a decent article. How about that? How about that? He said, you think after he almost killed Eddie a couple of years ago, he didn't almost kill Eddie Edwards, first of all, that he be fired. No, it was a mistake. It happens. It was a botch. It was a botch. It happens. It happens in wrestling. You know, um, Jeff Hardy. I don't know if you remember Jeff Hardy with the ladder. Jumped onto the ladder and hit. Um, I forgot who he hit. I think it was Joey Matthews or something. I think that's his name. Uh, hit him in the face and just completely crushed his nose. Jeff Hardy. Do you think Jeff Hardy should have been fired? No, yeah, I'm sure you haven't wrote any articles about that. So don't say, oh, oh Sammy Callahan should have been fired. You know, but he goes, but I guess they're under new management or something. You know, he goes, he goes, he's he's not this, he's not gonna be watching. Oh, bad news, guys. Bad news. Anthony, oh, what's this guy's name again? Anthony, um what's this guy? Oh, bad news. A Anthony De Salvatore is not watching Impact Wrestling next week. Bad news, guys. What, what are we gonna do? Uh, maybe uh we'll just uh Maybe we'll inform Scott Demore and uh, Don Cows. Let him know that that Anthony De, De Salvatore of Pop Culture Wrestling is not watching next week. So maybe we just should just cancel the whole year, just cancel all storylines and just move on. Maybe just um, maybe um, they just close up shop because uh, Anthony De Salvatore of Pop Culture Wrestling isn't watching next week. Really stupid article, man. Stupid, stupid article. Well, I, I got to end this now, man, because I got it all worked up and my throat is really bugging me right now. Um, but uh, yeah, so I'll, I'll just leave it at that. I just wanted to get that out of my system. And I think I got it out of my system. I got it out of my system. Okay, well, thank you very much for listening today. I'm your host, Lewis Carl, and this is Shooting Up North. We're heard right here on the Impact Lounge. And until next time, thank you very much. Take care. Bye-bye. Stay safe, everyone. So long. Bye-bye.